you now know a bit about data profiling and the role it plays in data quality. But many of us often confuse profiling with data quality assessment. In this video, we'll clear up that confusion and show how data profiling can actually be a powerful tool for improving data quality. Let's get in. Data profiling can be done manually with SQL queries or by using data profiling tools. When we first connect a profiling tool to our data, it gives us useful insights that might look like a data quality assessment because we get stats and measurements there. But at this stage, it's not yet a full data quality assessment. The initial profiling helps us gather data quality requirements. The actual assessment comes later when we turn these requirements into data quality rules, which give us more complete and actionable insights. Here is how it works. Step one, discover data quality requirements. This is where you profile your data to uncover things like value frequencies, data formats, and patterns. At this stage, you are not assessing data quality yet. Instead, identifying the rules and standards that will guide the later assessment. Let's move to step two, defining data quality requirements. Why is this important? Think of it like this. Data profiling gives us useful stats and insights, but that's not the whole story. We need rules to measure the quality of our data properly. Here's an example. Say you are working on a project with a plant equipment and profiling showed that 40% of the equipment has missing location data. This looks like a clear data quality issue, right? But not exactly. Without rules, we are missing the context here. Let's zoom in now. Some of the equipment was retired, so location data was not needed. Other equipment belonged to partner organizations or was managed in a different system altogether, so location info was not at all required here. This is why we define rules. In this case, we'd create a rule saying location data is required for equipment, but with exceptions for certain cases. Without these rules, the profiling results would make it seem like 40% of the records were incomplete. But in reality, those missing locations were valid. So while data profiling helps us spot potential issues, it does not give us full data quality assessment on its own. Defining these rules gives us a clearer, more accurate picture. Time for step three, evaluate the data. Now that we have done data discovery and set clear data quality requirements, it's time to evaluate the data based on these rules and document any successes or failures. This is the real data quality assessment where we test if the data meets the standards we set. Using our earlier example, we would now assess equipment's location using the stricter rules we defined. Profiling can help check patterns, formats, and values, but the goal here is to see each value passes or fails the expectations we set. When companies first run data profiling, they might see lots of defects and panic. But following these steps, discovering, defining, and then evaluating the data, they get a clearer picture of the true quality of their data. So, data profiling is like a magnifying glass revealing the hidden details of your data. But it's the rules you set that determine whether those details are gems or flaws. See you in the next one.